I filmed this before, but then I said my name and realized that I don't want people to know my name on this channel. So, we're doing this again. But, um, so, first book, Black, Black Irish, bad book, didn't like it. It's supposed to be, um, dark fiction, didn't really feel like it was dark fiction. I didn't really know what the hell it was, but whatever. Um, I just, I didn't particularly like it, and, um, it's supposed to be dark comedy, and, like, I like dark comedy, but not that dark comedy. It was not fun to watch. Um, that flag is for Trinidad, in case you don't know, because my family is from Trinidad. So cool. The, the second book, the book that I actually want to talk about, <laughs> is called, is the fourth Dragon Assassin book called Bitter Waters. I'm not sure why they called it Bitter Waters. They, like, have to pass, Bitter Waters is like a sea. They have to pass over it to get to Dr 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 Drachia? Drachia? I don't know. The place where the dragons live. So... They do that, and it's like really, really cold, and since Brax is kind of small, it's kind of difficult to cross it, but they make it, and um, we started to find out like little things about Brax, because at this point, we still don't really know anything about him, and um, the only other important part of this book besides, uh, besides um, like what Brax is doing is the fact that Carmen is now experiencing like some dragon-like abilities where like for a second she's like super 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 duper strong and then like the next second she's not she can't control it but that's a thing that's happening um so Brax was banished by his uh dad for killing his sister here's what happened Brax's sister was like getting married to some dude. Brax didn't like him. Brax challenged him to a fight for some reason. I do not remember. And um, they, like he was fighting dude and he was going to kill him. But then his sister like jumped in the way and was like, no, don't kill him. And then they both ended up dying. So Brax's dad banished him. For some reason that made the king look weak. He felt the loss of both children, which I can understand. And um, this entire time, right, like, Brax has been saying, for the past three books, he's been saying that, like, when we're done with your shit, Carmen, we are going to go kill somebody in my homeland, because you can do it, even though you're a human, and we finally find out why. Side note, um, Throd and, uh, the other girl, uh, they've been attacked by the Emperor, sucks to suck, but, you know, <laughs> Carmen's didn't bargain on that, but anyway, um, so Brax has access to this type of magic that like all dragons do. He wants to sacrifice his life to bring back his sister. According to a sacred dragon oath, <laughs> this sacrifice can only be done by someone who loves him. So, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm hoping that like, it ends with her stabbing him, and then we don't find out what happens until I read the next book. But I'm hoping that when he says he loves her, it's more like a brother type, sister type thing. Because it doesn't, like, there's no chemistry. It doesn't feel romantic at all. I really, really hope that, like, that, like, Brax and Karma, because they argue like brother and sister. So I'm hoping that that's what he means when he says that he loves her. Because if it's not that, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. <laughs> Like, I knew Brax was going to be endeared to her. I just didn't expect it to be that sudden. Um, when I read the next one, hopefully I'll find out. Because, man, if it's if it's anything but, like, sibling love, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm still going to keep reading them because one of them... I don't know if the series is done yet. I think they're up to book 10 now. One of them is called um, Old Enemies. So I imagine that there's probably going to be... Like, her brother, like, gets his memory back or something and is, like, justifiably pissed off. But, um, what else did I say? I was shocked by the ending. But, um, yeah. Uh, like, there's also, like, this whole thing with Carmen learning about dragon society. And Brax makes the point where Carmen spent so much time focused on getting revenge on her brother that she never really asked Brax about her year in servitude. She didn't ask about, um, like, 
what dragon society was like, what she would be doing, like who she'd be killing necessarily. She didn't, she knows nothing about dragons besides books and the books are written from the human perspective. So yeah. Um, I mean, obviously Carmen doesn't kill him because like I said, there are like 10 books already. So somehow they get out of this. I don't know if his sister comes back, but yeah. Um, that's 10th on the would read again list. I'm going to talk about one more book because I didn't really talk about Black Irish because it's second to last on the wouldn't read again list. It's also like this long. But um, so I read this book called Children of the Dragon by Frank S. Robinson. I did not realize that Children of the Dragon was separated into like different books. So I'm going to read it like that. However, because I didn't realize that, I put the entire page limit as when I was going to read the book. So I read it last in my thing or like second to last or something like that but in actuality it's uh towards the beginning so i'm going to review that now so i can start reading the next books so children of the dragon by frank s robinson came out in 1978 it's adventure fiction and an epic i think i think it's epic fiction it seems like it is so there's a lot of exposition in the beginning of the book what I got from it is that this dude named Sarbat Satani, Satani Kadik, I don't know how to say that. He rules the world of Bergarha brutally for 20 years. And like um, the way this world, the reason it's called Children of the Dragon is because there was an ancient dragon who ruled and devoured all of his challengers. And he even killed his kids, but there was a brood that escaped him and he hunted them down. And uh, they were the first people roll credits because they were called the children of the dragon and they defeated him and he declared that he's going to return to eat the world so um yeah uh um the book is at least i don't know about the other ones but this first one is a little bit um graphic because like sarba is like really bad like i'm going to put a huge trigger warning right here just like skip ahead like five seconds while I say this. He uses his nails to pinch off the nipple of a slave girl and then kills her while having sex with her. Welcome back. So anyway, um, there was like a prophecy that Sarbat heard that there's a person who he will meet in chains who will then um, like, so that the first time he meets him, the prisoner, the guy will be in chains, but then the last time he sees him, Sarbat will be in chains. And um, this guy, the prisoner that he thinks it is, uh, his name translates to man eater. I'm just going to call him Jehan because that's what the that's the word for man, I guess, in their language. And um, he killed Sarbat's executioner. And you, according to Sarbat, you have to be a pretty extraordinary man to do that. So he's obviously the one that's going to do this. Far be it from him to realize that you could circumvent the entire fucking... Um, you could circumvent the whole prophecy if he just killed him. But instead of doing that, he decides to torture this man. Literally, the entirety of the prophecy could have been skipped over if he had just killed him. But no, we gotta prove a point. So, alright. Um, yeah. So Maneater, Jehan... He is to be tortured, but not to death, and he's going to be fed human flesh so he can make him a real man-eater. Jehan does not fucking care. Um, there's another thing with some dude named Samud and his son, who is named Gafar. And he's... it's like a... I'm not really sure what's going on there. I think the point of that is just that Gafar is supposed to be, like, kind of radical, so... whatever. Um, but yeah, um, they know about Jahan and they're glad that he's been arrested. So yeah, Jahan also did have a family. Um, he never screamed and he ate the flesh. There's also an emperor. She's very disrespected. She wants to leave and Sarbat is like, okay, I'll allow it because my um, favorite concubine wants me to kill you. So instead of letting her leave, he just locks her in a room. Like... That's always the fun thing about um, stories like this when there's like a prophecy, when the prophecy is easily circumvented 
but the antagonist is so evil that he doesn't realize that by just killing all these people, he would circumvent the entirety of the prophecy and he'd be fine. It's hysterical when they don't realize that. Also, it seems like I am under the impression that Starbot has no children, so his dynasty is like over soon, so I don't know what's going on with that. Um, Jehan's family is eventually brought to see him, and dude, skip chapter 7, skip chapter 10, 11, and 12. Like, it's really bad. Like, dude, the torture that they do in those chapters, it is exceedingly terrible. Skip 7, 10, 11, and 12. All you need to know is that there was more torture and Jehan feels like, because like before he used to not care about anything, but now because of the torture, he's decided that he's not going to die. And in fact, he wants everything, particularly everything that Sarbot has. He wants everything. And this is also kind of what like really pushes him over the edge because after the torture, they kill his family. So yeah, um, skip those chapters for your own mental health. I'm not kidding. 7, 10, 11, and 12. Skip them. <laughs> it's just torture. Skip them. <laughs> um, things in Sarbat's kingdom at large are getting worse, and Gafar wants rebellion. He leaves home to go kill a rent collector, and he does kill him, but because he killed him, the um, guards like remembered that that particular rent collector harassed Samud's family, so they go torture Samud's parents, and I believe they, um, they burned them, and, um, like, Gafar became a vagabond, and then, like, he joined up with a camp, but then the camp that he frequented was destroyed, and that's the last place that we see him. I don't really care about Gafar. I don't know what's happening there. There's a guard named Kir Dahi, and, um, he, Jahan promises to kill him unless Kir Dahi helps him, um, so Kirda, he wasn't going to at first, but then Jahan started haunting his nightmares. So he lets the Jahan go. And that's the end of the story. The name of the first book and the name of the last book are actually the same because everything comes full circle. Literally all of this could have been avoided if Sarbat had just killed Jahan. But no, we have to be evil to be evil and we're going to prove a point. And you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> and it's like, dude... So, um, I like this book, not really because of the characters. I wasn't super endeared to Jahan, even though he was, like, being tortured and got his family killed and all that. I wasn't super endeared to him. I just want to see Sarbat get his shit fucked. Like, <laughs> this is, I want to see Sarbat fuck, I want to see Sarbat get fucked up. Because Jahan also promised that he was going to eat Sarbat's flesh. Dude. So, um, yeah. A map would have been nice. Uh, there are lots of unnecessarily long words in this because I think the author, like, just, it seems like he took the naming convention from some Asian society, but, uh, I, I, so many unnecessarily long words, um, but really though, like, I, when I read books like this, I'm fortunate enough that nothing ha like that has ever happened to me. So, like, I can read the chapters and be fine. But I'm super aware of the fact that chapters like those ones can be very triggering for certain people. Like, for your own mental health, please. <laughs> skip 7, skip 10, 11, and 12. Like, it, it's just torture. There's not a whole lot of plot. Most of Jahan's torture scenes, his inner monologue is just him, like, realizing that, like, he needs to survive so that he can exact revenge. That's like it. There's no major plot points. Skip those chapters if you decide to read this book. However, well, it is third on my list. I do, I do like this book. So yeah, please skip those chapters. Like don't, don't hurt yourself. Like I'm so not kidding. <laughs>